Hello everyone and welcome to day two of Lion Brand Week. So today we're doing a tutorial for a really cute warty little pumpkin. <laughs> we're calling this the bumpkin because he's got bumps so he's the bumpkin. Isn't he so stinking cute? Now his little his little stem can turn like twist <laughs> stand up on its own. He's got four rows of popcorn stitch on him. He is so adorable. You can make this, I, and I do show in the tutorial, you can make this much longer. You just continue doing straight double crochets in the round to extend the length of his body before you do the decrease rows. And you can make this as long or as tall or as short and squatty as you want. I personally really like the squatty little pumpkins. Now, this yarn is the Color Theory yarn. And it is in the color Himalayan Salt and tourmaline now as of the recording of this video which is october 1st the himalayan salt is out of stock rest assured i don't know when it's going to be in stock but i do have some other color options for you in case you want a different shade of pumpkin so i happen to buy the little sample sizes of this yarn so in case you don't like the muted colored pumpkin of the tourmaline and the himalayan salt which i think is so stinking cute you also have you can change out the stem for the color caper which is like an olive green which i think would be super super cute with the color canyon <laughs> so you have another not completely traditional bright orange and bright green or a brown stem and you have another pumpkin so these are the colors like i said caper is the green and canyon is the orange this will also make another really cute pumpkin but also if you want like a brown stem instead they have nutmeg which can be mixed with raisin to make another shade of pumpkin which i think would be so stinking cute i think that would be an adorable pumpkin and then i threw dijon in because you could also do the canyon with the dijon for a stem or you can do or this is raisin not canyon you can do the raisin with the caper or the canyon and the dijon like it's really they have some really beautiful colors to mix and match but like you can also really extend your mind and do a beautiful white pumpkin which this is actually a cream color so this is the color ivory this would make a fantastic beautiful gorgeous pumpkin as well and you can do the entire pumpkin this color or you can throw in a stem color which this is the caper with the ivory depending on what your aesthetic is what you're going for i like this is why i really love the color theory yarn the color theory yarn is beautiful it's soft it's squishy it works up gorgeous for more than just clothes because this really was made for like garments it just it it's it's soft it's squishy it feels delicious against your skin it works up like it works up beautifully <laughs> it's it's a really nice yarn but the colors are all meant to go together or mix and match together or i kind of even like the ivory with the tourmaline tell me that wouldn't be a gorgeous pumpkin and you can make one white with a green stem and one green with a white stem <laughs> just saying i'm actually glad that i pulled out all these colors because I, I looked online and i was like okay well the himalayan salt is out of stock and like i said that's of october 1st is when i'm recording this but they have all of the other colors that i've showed you in stock oh wait raisin is out of stock the raisin is out of stock that's right i didn't like that one anyway so <laughs> the rest of these are in stock so the canyon is in stock the nutmeg is in stock which i didn't show you caper is in stock dijon is in stock tourmaline is in stock ivory is in stock and they also have moonbeam which is more of a a whitey white do i have that one let me see if i have that one that's ivory So this is the moonbeam. It's more gray. 
and this is the ivory this is the moonbeam any of these colors would make fantastic really bougie looking like foo foo looking <laughs> pumpkins it will complete your look now what i do with my pumpkins is i make pumpkins every year and i stack them around the base of my fireplace and i don't use my fireplace so it's completely safe it's not like a fire hazard or anything like that it's not like i'm sticking flammables down there <laughs> but um just forming it a little bit it's got a little bit of a it was pushing out a little bit on this side i take and stack them around the bottom of my fireplace you could also stack them on like a mantle or a bookshelf or you could set them like wherever you want at the opening of your front door if you want to like you can put these in baskets and buckets like as if you just went pumpkin picking and you have all these cute little delicate things now i have seen pumpkins at every store i've been to this season that are machine knit or have the look of being handmade with like the wrapping styrofoam i went to walmart they were wrapping styrofoam pumpkins in knit fabric and calling it a pumpkin and like while it's really really cute my handmade ones are so much cuter and it doesn't cost as much because <laughs> this yarn how much is this yarn right now it is uh, 6.99 as of the recording of this october 1st there is a sale they, they have a coupon code for 30 percent off yarns they've been doing 30 percent off quite regularly lately so i don't know if when this when this starts if there's going to be another 30 percent off sale because this tutorial should be up tuesday which is second the third i believe so um yeah 6.99 still it's not a bad price what do you need for this tutorial you need two colors a stem color and um a base color and you need a little bit of fluff to stick in there and you have yourself a really cute pumpkin now let's talk about the yarn the, like i said the yarn is a, a a worsted weight number four it comes in really beautiful to me unusual colors it's like muted rainbow and i really like the way the colors go and blend together and you can mix and match and all of these would make fantastic pumpkins but if you have some left over, i mean you can make several pumpkins this is what i have left from one pumpkin so you can get two pumpkins out of one skein of yarn very easily so if you buy a tourmaline which is the the stem color and a pumpkin color you can easily get probably four pumpkins because you can do two in the orange color and two in the green color and it will be absolutely beautiful and 6.99 skein is a bargain for this beautiful luscious yarn like I said, it works up really nice. It's soft. It would make fantastic wearables if you wanted to make a wearable instead of making a pumpkin. But, like, it's, it's spooky season, okay? It's harvest season. You could keep this up all the month of October and all the month of November because of Thanksgiving, unless you're in Canada. Because in Canada, Thanksgiving is in October. But you can keep this up <laughs> until you put your Christmas decorations up. There, we have it. Yeah. <laughs> Or until you take your holiday, your Halloween decorations down. Like, if you don't celebrate Christmas, it's all good. But it's the cutest little pumpkin. I had a lot of fun making it. It was a lot of work trying to figure out, like, the baubles and where every, I wanted everything. Because I had an idea in my head. And I just, I really am happy with the way this pumpkin turned out. So stay tuned because the tutorial for this is coming up next. It's easy. It's not difficult. It's just popcorn stitches, front post stitches, single crochets, double crochets. Like, all of that's in there. And I walk you through it step by step. So it's not anything complicated that you can't do. This is a very easy amigurumi. It is made entirely in one piece. So there's no sewing. Which I'm so happy about. <laughs> I hate amigurumi with a bunch of pieces you got to sew on. It's all one piece. So it starts stem down. It's really easy. And um, I hope you will join me for this tutorial. Okay, so for this tutorial... We are going to need a five millimeter crochet hook. These two beautiful colors of Color Theory yarn. I have the colors Himalayan Salt and the color Tourmaline because I think this is going to be so pretty. So we're going to start with the Tourmaline. You also need some, obviously, you need some some polyfill, some fluffiness. <clears throat> All right, so let's get started. If you've never made an amigurumi before, don't worry. I make my amigurumis all in one piece for the most part. Um, I try to make them as easy as possible. 
not the biggest fan of amigurumis personally, um, but I really like making pumpkins. I think the pumpkins are a lot of fun. I'm trying to center pull and it's not working real well. All right, so we got a huge yarn barf that was way more than what we needed. I'm gonna put my phone into airplane mode cause people just <laughs> keep on texting me. All right, so to start, <clears throat> we're gonna start with a magic loop. And I've shown you magic loop in tutorials plenty of times. This is not real hard. If you're scared of magic loops, don't be. It's very much like a slip knot. So you take and you cross it over like that. You put your short tail on the bottom, you pinch it at the X, you go top to bottom, and you pull up a loop, and you chain one, and you have a magic loop. Now, we actually need it a little bit smaller than that because we're just working out of a small space. We need a, a small magic loop. You're going to chain one, and I know this is going to feel fiddly, but I promise you it's worth the work. Put six single crochets in here, so that's one. Two, work right over the top of that tail. Three, four, five, six. Pull your tail real tight. And then we're just gonna work right at, we're not slip stitching. We are just gonna work a single crochet right in that first stitch. Actually, we're gonna put two single crochets in that first stitch and every stitch around so that we should have 12 at the end of the row. So just two in every stitch. So one, two, try not to crochet too tight or otherwise you're gonna be fighting it like I am, three, Four, I'm working right over the top of that tail so that I don't have to weave it in later. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 12. Now that should have gotten us all the way around. And if it didn't, we got 12 and that's all that matters. And now we're just going to <clears throat> keep going in a circle. Just put a single crochet in every stitch all the way around and keep going in a circle. And what's going to happen is this is going to form the stem of our pumpkin. So we're doing our pumpkin stem down. You want things tight but not so tight that you're fighting your stitches. I, I've already made one of these pumpkins and there are, if you see little holes, I mean that's obviously not, that little fluff ain't going to come out of those little tiny holes. But if you want your stitches tighter, you can always go down a hook size, but for me I would rather not fight my stitches. I really like the color theory yarn and I know that I'm way late on the color theory yarn bandwagon okay <clears throat> it's been out for a while and I came to it way late it's very recently that I discovered it because to me like the muted colors are not my favorite thing I like bright bold neons you know when you get to this part where it starts to try to curl in fold it back so that will fold over your finger like this okay and because I the colors were not like in my normal wheelhouse of colors I didn't pay any attention to this yarn I was like whatever like whatever those aren't my normal colors so I didn't even touch it feel it try to buy it and then when I did buy it for a review I was like well this yarn's kind of nice and I like the colors so now I like the colors they're still not my normal wheelhouse of colors. I like bright, bold neons especially. But I really am liking this year. There's a lot of, like I went to Michael's for example, and Michael's had a whole display of pastel Halloween decorations. Pastel. Like pink. Okay? 
and I kind of fell in love with the aesthetic of it. I was like, that is so unique. It is so cool. It is so like extra. <laughs> and so I didn't buy any of it because I find Michael's holiday and in, in, uh, seasonal decorations to be way overpriced. So I didn't buy any of it, but I just kept thinking about how cute it was and how cool it would look on my mantle. And so that's why we're doing this pumpkin is because it is a unique, it's a unique colorway. It's a unique design. And I worked really hard to make this design. Just so you know, I struggled with it. We, we were on the struggle bus for a, quite a few hours there. And I had to frog it and rip it out and all that. But... I really like the way it turned out and so now I'm kind of excited and I also really like this yarn. I like the way the yarn feels, I like the way it works up and I really like the muted pastel -y. well they're not even pastel they're just muted colors. Which again, not my normal repertoire. Now you can make your stem absolutely as long or as short as you want. You want to stop here and have a little button stem? You can do that. I'll get to that point eventually. I like my I like long stems. I love long stems. I even when I go to the pumpkin patch where I go to Aldi's and pick my pumpkin, I try to get a pumpkin with a long stem. I don't know. I just like the way it looks. So I am gonna go for a stem about the length of my thumb, which is about two inches. Now if you don't know that, that average size thumb. Now if you ain't got a thumb, you can't measure it off your thumb, but for me, the average thumb each section of your thumb bone is about an inch so your thumb is about two inches as give or take your thumbs can be bigger or smaller mr cinnamon does not fit into that category at all he has giant man hands is what i call them <laughs> his hands are almost the size of a gorilla like he has massive hands his hand and i don't have small hands i don't have small hands he makes my hands look like children's hands, like they're tiny compared to his hands. So we obviously can't measure two inches by his thumb, but like my thumb I can. And I know you just got your tape measure out and measured your thumb. I know you did. <laughs> Last time I mentioned that little hack, a bunch of people were like, I just measured my thumb. That's how I measure inches is by the tip of my finger right here, the tip of my thumb. If I'm measuring something, I lay it down there and then I put my finger at where the line is and I go to the next. And I'm like, okay, well that's two inches, three inches, etc. Yeah, that's how that's how I do it. <clears throat> Sorry for the constant throat clearing. It is a big shift in weather this week and uh, my throat is... Well, my whole head is reacting to that. All right, we have us a thumb hole. <laughs> we have the start of our mitten. No, we have the, the, the top of our pumpkin. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is it's reached the length that I want it to. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch just to kind of like close off that row. And I'm going to chain two. And then I am going to read my notes. All right, we are going to put a double crochet in that same stitch that we just chained two out of. And then we're going to put two double crochet in every stitch around. Two double crochet. Okay, in every stitch. So you should, in theory, have 24 double crochets, but if you do not, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. I filled my bird feeder and the birds are on the porch just being so loud. Of course, now they stopped when I brought it up. So there's going to be probably bird noises in the background. So there's two double crochet in every stitch.
And this is the last row we're going to do with the green. When you're done with this, we're going to slip stitch to join. You can cut the green out. <clears throat> um, because the top of our pumpkin is going to be textured, I'm not doing leaves or stem, or not stems. I'm not doing leaves or vines like I normally do on my pumpkins. Just because it kind of takes away from the, the, the texture that we're putting on the top of the pumpkin. So... I mean, if you want to add leaves and, and vines and stuff coming from your pumpkin, you absolutely can do that. All right. And we made it all the way around. We're going to slip stitch to join. Cut. Close up. And there's our little pumpkin stem. All right, now got to figure out what to do with all the yarn barf that I got when I pulled that yarn out. Now let's try to get some orange out without that big giant yarn barf and see what happens. So like I said, this is the color Himalayan Salt. Yeah, this yarn just did not try an old trick. I took the label off. Let's see if we can get the center out that way. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, we got two ends there. One of the ends does not belong. This is the one that does not belong in there. Wow. So that trick didn't work for me. It has worked in the past, it's just not working with this one. Pause. All right, that didn't take too incredibly long. <clears throat> so what we're gonna do is I'm going to make a little slip stitch here, not slip stitch, a slip knot. And I'm going to attach it just on the other side of the knot. And I'm going to slip stitch it over the top of that knot because I'm I'm gonna work over the knot so there all right I'm gonna work over these str string actually no I'm not we're just gonna tuck them in we don't need to work over those strings all right chain two now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do front post double crochet and then a double crochet in the same stitch so we're still increasing but we're also creating a textured effect here so the chain two counts as a double crochet, so we're going to front post double crochet around this stitch. So you're going to go down and around, pull up a loop, and then just double crochet around it. Go to the next stitch where that knot is, put a double crochet, and then front post around the stitch. And then double crochet in the next stitch. And then front post double crochet. Actually, I am one over from where I'm supposed to be. That not messed me up. It's supposed to be over here. There we go. Alright. And there we go. Right, you might have to pull your yarn back a little bit so that you can see that the stitch is actually hiding behind the front post. Double crochet. And then front post double crochet. So you're crocheting a double crochet around the post. And just do that all the way around. Double crochet, front post, double crochet. All, so every stitch should be getting two. So we went to from, what, 24 to 48 stitches around. I think this is going to be the prettiest little muted pumpkin. And I've seen pumpkins this color in nature. Well, they're not really pumpkins. I think they're gourds. This almost reminds me of the color of a butternut squash. 
but I have seen muted colored pumpkins that are all this color. So you can make the pumpkin all, you can make another pumpkin all in this color. And I've seen pumpkins all in that color. In nature. But I think they're, I think they're not actually pumpkins or a type of gourd. I could be wrong. I know that all of the local farms around here grow those type of pumpkins. And they are like a different fee than the regular pumpkins. And they don't carve up real good, but they look pretty on your porch. If you're one of those people that just put pumpkins all over your porch. Which I think is a beautiful aesthetic, but... I'm not one to try to draw in the rodents to come eat. <laughs> so... No, we're good. I don't put vegetables all over my porch like that. Even though it's beautiful. And there's a couple of people downtown that do it. And it looks fantastic. But to me, I'm just thinking, okay... I'm drawing rodents directly to my porch and then what follows the rodents is the snakes and I'm not really interested in getting bit by a venomous snake so yeah we don't do that says the woman who has bird feeders which also attracts oh I didn't tell you guys me and Juju went to go see Howl's Moving Castle the movie over the weekend and we came home and we have like a there's a when you first turn into our neighborhood, there's a, it looks like a park. We have um, benches and stuff up there. And there's like a place for a volleyball net. And we came in and there's this little tiny coyote. I like that. Smallest coyote I've ever seen. I haven't seen many coyotes, but like it was a tiny coyote. And he's just sitting there by the picnic benches cutest little thing so of course I rolled down my window and I yipped at him because like that's what you're supposed to do when you see an animal on the side of the road I also moo at cows <laughs> and I gobble at turkeys because I can make a killer turkey noise so yeah he was adorable however I quickly made sure that all the animals were inside although they, I don't think the coyote can get into my backyard because we have a really tall fence but I made sure all the animals were inside Except for the cats across the street. Alright. So now because that first one here. So I did the front post on this last stitch. Because that first stitch was a just a chain two. Counts as a double crochet. But a regular one. I can go ahead and slip stitch into that. Alright. That's what it should look like. See that beautiful texture around here. Now I have another tutorial for pumpkins. That starts off pretty much exactly the same way. And if you want a much simpler, more traditional pumpkin, I will try to link that below. And you can still do it with these same colors. But this one is going to be textured and my yarn is falling off the table. Alright, let me turn my page so I can keep track of all of my messy notes. Alright. Oops. Pull the stitch out. So we're going to once again chain two. And then we are going to front post the front post stitch. Okay, we're going to front post around that front post stitch. Then we are going to double crochet in the next two stitches. So we're going to double crochet in the the regular double crochet and then we are going to double crochet in the post and then double crochet around the post okay so you should have a double crochet or a front post double crochet I'm going to double check my notes I'm doing it right so front post double crochet two double crochet front post double crochet and we're going to do that across so you're going to have to really be careful to pay attention to which ones are your front post and which ones are not. So it should be, this previous row should be front post, regular front post, regular front post. So the next row should be front post, two double crochets, front post. Okay. Now, however you decide to put those double crochets in between the two front posts, it does not matter. You can put two double crochets 
in the same stitch and then just front post the next one it's not going to make a difference see it makes no difference between putting it in two separate stitches or putting them in the same stitch zero difference so as long as it goes front post two double crochets front post good to go there's my shoe squeaking on my chair Bentley ate my slippers once again so I have lined crocs on my feet so they have their crocs but they have like um fiber on the inside like they're they're lined so front post double crochet two double crochets front post double crochet around because my feet are cold and I need to go to the store and buy myself some more slippers and keep them away from Bentley's mouth. I bought him a new toy to keep him because he's he's chewing like crazy. So I bought him a really good Kong toy at Tractor Supply. He's the happiest dog in the whole world. Because dogs, they naturally want to chew, especially when they're teething. So I can't blame him for wanting to chew. It's just irritating that he keeps taking off with my stuff. But again... It's my fault for not keeping it away from him. And this is going to get a little wonk wonky. So it's going to want to like fold over and get, because we're adding more stitches than like is, you're adding, you're adding a bunch of stitches. So it's going to, it's going to start to ripple and wave. And that is normal. It's supposed to do that. It will all work out. you got to trust the process. Okay. Even I, this is one of the reasons I kept ripping it out when I was designing it yesterday is I was trying to design it and I, I knew in my head what I wanted it to look like and because it was rippling I was not trusting myself and I knew what I was doing but I wasn't trusting myself and Mr. Cinnamon looked at me and I kept saying this to myself in my head like you need to trust the process trust the process and so he looked at me and he's all just keep going just trust it and because he said what I was already thinking I was like all right I'm just gonna trust it and we moved forward and it turned out and it is beautiful and it worked exactly the way I wanted it to work. So just trust the process. Trust the design. It starts to get all wavy and wompy. Wonky. Why do I keep saying wompy? Wonky. It will work out. It will all equal out. I just gotta keep looking at my very complicated notes because <laughs> in design when you're designing something like this. I kept writing something down and scratching it out because it didn't work and then on and on. And I didn't rewrite them like I normally do so I'm reading through scribbles. I figured since it's uh, the spooky season, it's fall, we might as well make something that is for harvest, for Halloween, for Thanksgiving, whatever holiday you celebrate. Got a tangle. Sorry, just had to uh, pause to untangle that. We made it almost all the way around. Two double crochet. Post double crochet. All right, we have an extra stitch there, but it's fine. All right, so I got because that chain two is there, I'm gonna slip stitch on the other side of the chain two where the front post is. So technically, I have a third stitch there, but we're gonna ignore it. So that's what mine is looking like. See how it wants to just fold up on itself? 
All right, next step. All right, now, this is where things are getting a little bit bumpy, okay? Don't worry, it's gonna be fine, it's not hard. All right, so we're gonna chain two just to get us up higher. We are gonna front post that double crochet, okay? Now, in the middle here, we are going to, it doesn't matter but that there's two stitches here, just pick a spot in the middle and we're going to put five double crochet, okay, in the same stitch. One, two, three, four, and five. Take your hook out. I know this is weird. Okay, the spot between the front post double crochet, where that first stitch is, pop your hook in there, grab the loop, Put a little bit tighter, pull it through, chain one. That's our popcorn stitch, okay? Then we're gonna grab that front post and we're gonna do another front post double crochet. See? We're gonna do that all the way around. So we did that front post on the other side of this popcorn, so now it's time to put another popcorn stitch. So in the, sec in the center of the two front posts wherever you wherever is the middle to you put five double crochet two three four and five pull out your hook go into this very first stitch of the shell grab your loop pull it through chain one then go to that next post and do a front post, double crochet. See, now we have two little bumps. You're gonna do that all the way around. So pick the center, five double crochet. Two, three, four, five. Pull out my hook. Into that first stitch, pull it through, chain one, front post, double crochet in the next front post. Okay. Now these might want to fold themselves in like that. You just pop them. It's like a little poppet thing. It's lots of fun to play with. And then five double crochet. Don't overthink where you're putting the stitch. As long as it's between the two posts, it's not gonna matter. Create the popcorn stitch. Chain one, front post, double crochet. Now, this is gonna be, for the next couple of rows, we're gonna repeat the popcorn stitch and the next stitch, or the next row a total of four times. So I'm doing the popcorn, so that's five double crochet. I have never done a popcorn stitch like this until yesterday, and I kind of like it. I tend to do, I'm just pulling out more yarn from the cake because it's like, or the skein because it's wanting to hang up on me front post double crochet I learned the stitch yesterday usually I do bobbles which bobbles appear on the back of the fabric but I really like this I like the way it looked five double crochet Careful not to lose your stitch, so pull it out enough that you're not going to lose it. Chain one, front post, double crochet. All right, we're going to go all the way around, and I'll meet you at the beginning of the row, and we're going to have just bobbles all the way around. It's going to be studded. It's going to be fabulous. 
All right, we are almost to the end of the row. Put my last front post double crochet and then my last popcorn stitch. Chain one, come over here and slip stitch into the top of that front post double crochet. Now see it's still all wonky, wobbly, it's, it's, it's okay, it's gonna work out, I promise. <laughs> Alright, so the next row is gonna be, we're gonna do chain two, front post double crochet around that front post. And then in this row, behind the bobbles, so you might have to pull your bobble down a little bit, we're gonna put three double crochet. So this is gonna be the repeat. It's three double crochet and then the bobble row, okay? So we're gonna put a double crochet on the side of the bobble, right in the center of the bobble, and on the other side of the bobble, okay? Then we're going to front post double crochet. And then we're going to put three double crochet. So on either side. So on this side, down the center of the bobble, and on the other side of the bobble. So that's three. And then a front post double crochet. And we're going to do this all the way around. And then we're going to go back and do the bobble row again. And we're going to repeat it until we have one, two, three, four rows of bobbles. Okay. Don't worry, I'm not abandoning you yet. Three double crochets. Front post. So on the right side of the bobble down the center of the bobble and on the left side of the bobble front post on the right side of the bobble see where the stitches are you kind of see the hole here double down the center of the bobble so right here And then on the left side, same thing. If you pull the stitches apart, you should see a little hole right there. And then front post. And your stitches don't have to be in the exact spots that I'm showing you. As long as you have three there that are spread apart a little bit to give you a solid fabric. And don't forget your little front posts. It's going to be fine. And yeah, see how it's wanting to just do all that. I promise it'll work out. This is where I started to panic. I was like, I don't think it's going to work out. It's like, there's too many stitches in there. Why is it? It works out. I promise you it works out. <laughs> I know. I didn't even trust myself. I'm expecting you guys to trust me. Right side of the bobble. Or actually, it's a popcorn stitch. Not a bobble. Down the center of the popcorn and on the left of the popcorn. See, if I get talking about popcorn too much, it's going to make me want to go get a snack. And I can't have popcorn because, you know, diabetes. Popcorn's got a lot of sugars in it. And if your arm is starting to hurt like mine is, you're doing it right. So that's what the next row should look like. So you have the bobble and then you have like this solid piece around the bobble. Isn't that pretty? I really like this. I had, well I didn't, I can't say I had fun designing this because I did not. I had fun after the process was done and I really liked the look of the pumpkin and I'm having fun right now. But the designing it was not fun. Right side, center, left side, around the post. Alright. You guys got this. Just continue around. 
continue around and I will meet you at the end of the row. Don't forget how to do this because you're going to do this a couple more times. We're going to do, right after we get done with this row, we're going to do another bobble row. And then we're going to repeat this row. And then we're going to do another bobble row. And we're going to repeat this row. <laughs> Alright, I'll be right back. Alright, we're back at the beginning. We're going to put our last three double crochets. Actually, the last two because we just need the le the right side, the center, and that chain two is the left side. So we're gonna slip stitch into that. See, it all worked out. That's what it looks like, all crazy and wonky. And I know it doesn't make sense that it's gonna work out. It's gonna work out. <laughs> okay. So the next row, we are going to chain two again. We're gonna front post double crochet. This is the repeat. Okay. So we got the. The, the bobble, the double crochet row, the bobble, the double crochet row, okay? So now we're going to, once again, we're going to go to that center stitch where the, see, now there's three double crochet, whereas this row there's only two, so it didn't really matter. This one, you want to put it in the center, so you have the two posts here. You want to put it in the center double crochet that's coming out of the center of the bobble. We're going to put another, or the popcorn stitch. We're going to put another popcorn stitch, so we're going to do five double crochet. Three, four, five. See, you already know this row because we already did it. Slip stitch, front post double crochet. Do it again. Popcorn. So five double crochet. Three, four. Five. Front post. So this row is just bobble, front post, bobble, front, or popcorn, front post, popcorn, front post, popcorn, front post. All the way around. And then the next row is exactly the same as the last row. So front post, three double crochet front post. Okay. Chain one, front post. Okay, so see, this is what this row should look like. Popcorn, front post, popcorn, front post, popcorn, front post. And the popcorn stitch is five double crochet. Three, four, five. Connect it this way, chain one, and then front post. All right, so do that all the way around. I'll meet you at the beginning of the row. All right, so I made it all the way around. I made my last bobble. I did the chain one, and then I'm gonna slip stitch into the top of that, the front post we did at the beginning of the row. We're going to chain two and we're going to repeat the three double crochet row. Okay, so we're going to front post, put a double crochet in the right, double crochet in the center of the popcorn, double crochet on the left side of the popcorn, and then a front post. And you just repeat the bobble row and this row until you have four rows of bobbles total, okay? And then after you do the, the fourth row of the bobble, repeat this row again. So just, you'd have four repeats of the bobble, double, bobble, double, bobble, double, bobble, double. And because we already know how to do this, I don't need to show you these next couple of rows. You guys can do this on your own. And just remember, three double crochets, Right, center, left, front post, 
all the way around, do another row of bobbles, another row of the doubles, bobbles, and doubles, and I'll meet you at the end when we have four bobble rows. And if you ever get lost, you ever get hung up, or you forgot what you're supposed to be doing, just rewind the video a little bit and rewatch the bobble row and rewatch this row where you're doing right, center, left, front post. And also, if you see a little gap here, don't worry about it. it it's going to be fine in the end. Because when these stitch, stitches stretch down, that hole closes. So that was another thing. I was like, okay, but like, there's a little hole that... No, that hole closes when we fill it. And it works out. And everything is fine. And this pumpkin is turning out so cute. Alright, so... Bobble doubles, bobble doubles, till you have four row repeat, four repeats of the bobble and the double, bobble double, bobble double, bobble double, and I'll meet you at the end of that. You got this. You can do this. See you in a minute. All right, so we got our four rows of bobbles. One, two, three, four, and then I just finished that row of the double crochet on the other side of that. I'm gonna slip stitch to join. And then this is where your creativity comes in, okay? If you want a short, squatty pumpkin, then we're only going to do a couple of repeats of the next row. If you want a longer, like thinner pumpkin or a taller pumpkin, you're going to do much more rows. I want a short, squatty pumpkin because this is, this is my, uh, I don't know if I can zoom out anymore. <laughs> See how it's a short, squatty pumpkin? So it's like this wide. You can make this as tall as you want it. So this repeat row is going to determine how tall your pumpkin is. Okay. So you just keep going until this reaches the height that you want it to be. So we're going to chain two. We are going to front post double crochet. And then put a double crochet in each one of those three double crochets. And a front post double crochet. Just repeat this row as many times as you want. You can just do this row once and start the decrease for the bottom. You can do it five times. You can do it 20 times. As many times as you want. Just put three double crochets in between the front posts. So each one of those stitches. Don't put one in the, see the front post is right here. Don't put an extra double crochet in there, otherwise you're increasing. We don't need it to be fatter at this point. So make sure it looks like that. Okay, so we got the front post. And there's a stitch here, here, and here. And then front post this one. Okay, so there should be three double crochets. One, two, three. And then a front post. Like I said, just do this as many times as you want for the, the length of your pumpkin. I think for me, I'm going to do this row twice. So I'm going to do this row and I'm going to do one more after this. And then we're going to start the decrease. Because like I said, I want a short squatty pumpkin. And we still have enough yarn to probably make a whole other pumpkin. So keep that in mind. If you only have one skein of yarn, you can't go too, too tall on this or you're going to need another, you're going to run out of yarn. But we have more than enough. We could probably make another pumpkin after we're done with this one. That's how much yarn I have left in my skein. Oops. I would weigh this and tell you how much yarn I have left, but... Mr. Cinnamon took off with my uh, my scale. And I know he didn't bring it back down here because he never puts nothing away when he takes off with it. Him and the kids, they take my scale, they take my scissors. Which is why I have 47 pairs of scissors. I wish I could quit sliding out of these loops. Alright, so I'm going to do this row and I'm going to do one more row. And then we'll come back and I will show you how to do the decrease on your pumpkin. Like I said, though, you can repeat this row as many times as you want to get the however tall you want your pumpkin to be. Just set it down on the table and you're like, well, that's a good height because we're going to add 
with the decrease we're going to probably get another inch maybe on the bottom of it so just keep going until it gets to the height that you want but for me I'm going to do this row twice all right so I did two rows of that repeat and now we are going to I'm going to show you like I said you can do more than two rows you can do one row you can do five rows you can do ten rows so now I'm going to show you how to do the decrease row. So we're going to start with the chain two and the front post double crochet like we have every other row, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a fast decrease. We are going to double crochet the next three stitches together, okay? So wrap your yarn like you're making a double crochet. Go into the next loop, pull up a loop, pull off two. Yarn over, go into the next loop, pull up a loop. Pull off two, yarn over, pull up a loop, pull off two, pull off all of those, those stitches, and we have just did a decrease, we decreased, we did three double crochets together, and then do the front post. And we're going to do that again, all the way around, three double crochets together. And then the front loop. That's how that looks. Let's keep doing three double crochets together. The three double crochets that are in between the front loop posts. And then the front loop. Double crochet. Or the front post. And then three, the next three stitches double crochet together. And then front post double crochet. Front post. We'll wrap our yarn, go in, pull up a loop, pull off two, wrap our yarn, go on the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two. Wrap our yarn, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two, pull off all the stitches, and then front post. See, it's wanting to curl naturally. It will end up curling the other way. I'm just going to try curling towards you at first. Three double crochet together. Front post. Three double crochet together. Front post. See how much it's wanting to curl. <laughs> All right, just continue that, and I'll meet you at the end of this row. All right, so when you get to the end of this row, because we made that chain two there. We're not going to do a full uh, three together. What we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to do like we did the other ones. Where we're going to do the two together. But then we're going to go over here and grab instead of wrapping and going into the third stitch. We're just going to grab the chain two at the top and pull through all of those stitches like that. Okay. And then that has completed your row. Now the next row the beginning of this row chain two yarn over wrap around I skipped the middle stitch ah, bonehead all right wrap around like you're doing uh, the front post take off two so now you have two loops on here wrap your yarn like you're making a double crochet go into this next stitch pull up a loop pull off two wrap your yarn go around the po next post and then that those are the three stitches we're doing together okay so now that's how we're starting the row when you move on we're going to wrap our yarn and go into the next stitch like we're doing a double crochet but don't complete it wrap your yarn go around the post and then double crochet those together that's what i did wrong okay <laughs> so it's the center stitch and the post okay so we're going to double crochet those two together get everything situated all right so the very first stitch was we're going to do the chain two and then you're doing the post 
the center stitch and then the next post but for the rest of the row we are going wrap like you're making a double crochet go into the the cluster in the middle the decrease pull up a loop pull off two wrap your yarn and then go around the post pull off two pull off three All right wrap our yarn go into the next stitch which is a cluster pull off two wrap your yarn go around the post pull up a loop pull off two pull off three okay that's our decrease for this row I got it I got it wrap our yarn go into the cluster pull up a loop pull off two wrap our yarn go around the post pull up a loop pull off two pull off three wrap our yarn go into the cluster pull up a loop pull off two wrap our yarn go around the post pull up a loop pull off two pull off three all right I think you got it now I think I got it too wrap cluster pull up pull off two pull nope wrap go around the post pull up pull off two pull off three there we go got it wrap cluster pull up pull off two wrap post pull up pull off two pull off three got it got it got it got it you got it there we go we got this we got it. And just when I got it, the battery died. That's fine. We're still, we're still doing wrap, cluster, pull up a loop, pull off two, wrap, post, pull up a loop, pull off two, pull off three. This is the last row. We are going to do the front post. And this is around the time you want to make sure that you have your fluff or your polyfill close by. Because this part's going to go kind of fast. Where's the beginning of our row? Where is it? I think it's right here. Yep, that's it. I'm going to stitch mark that. That's my advice to use stitch mark it on this last row because that's that was hard to see. stitch or the beginning stitch of the row. There we go. My little shrink it ink stitch marker. <laughs> Alright, there we got it. We got it. Continue doing the decreases. Cluster, front post, two together. Cluster, front post, two together. Cluster, front post, together. Cluster, front post, together. All right, now see how our hole has gotten significantly smaller. This is our last. Cluster, and actually that post has already been created so we got the half a cluster and then we're going to slip stitch into the chain two, pull that together, right, hang on, now we're going to move our stitch marker and just hold that stitch, so pop it in that stitch, because now we're going to kind of fill the pumpkin a little bit, okay, and what you want to do is fill the stem first, So 
just grab a small amount. Okay. And then kind of like roll it up. Okay. And then jam it in there as best you can. And the more you stuff in there, the stiffer your stem is going to be. So I just shoved it in there. We got a little bit sticking out still. It's fine. Now, I'm going to grab a big giant handful. That's probably more than we need, but like it's a massive handful, okay? <laughs> and we're going to kind of fold it in on itself. So that the outside edge is smooth. Kind of like if you were making bread or dough. You roll it into itself. So that the outside is smooth. Okay. And then. Move our hooks so it doesn't fall. You kind of tuck it in the hole. And you want more in there than you think you're going to need. There. Right. I just stretched everything out. Look at that. That's so cute. I'm going to pull you guys up a little bit higher. As we can see. And everything nice and tight. All right. Everything back a little bit. Now, at this point, you can kind of like adjust your stuffing in there to get the pumpkin looking the way you want it to look. You can really squish it and shape it at this point. And then we are going to, and I, I actually think this might be a little bit too much fluff. I'm going to pull some out. Definitely too much fluff. All right, let's try that. Yeah, that's better. All right. Now, this is we're gonna move on and we're gonna do, instead of the double crochets we've been doing, we're gonna move on to single crochets on the bottom of the pumpkin, just to make sure that everything is secure. You can remove your stitch marker. All right. Now I'm just going to chain one and I'm going to do actually let's do a row of half double crochets all the way around. Do a row of half double crochets. Try to keep everything nice and tight. And this will, whoops, give us a little bit of structure. See, now if you have too much fluff in there, your holes are going to be like all gapey right there. Just doing half doubles all the way around. A safety feature that you can do to make sure the fluff doesn't come out is you can take a piece of pantyhose or um, stockings and you can put the stuffing in the stocking before you put it in here and it will make sure that none of the stuffing comes out. I don't ever need to do that because I've never had a problem with the stuffing coming out. As long as you do everything kind of tight, you're not going to have like big gapes or big holes. My hook is getting squeaky. All right. That's the beginning of the row right there. If you have a hard time seeing where the beginning of your row is, just make sure you put that stitch marker there. Now 
And excuse the squeak of my hook, because I'm pulling really tight. That's the beginning of the row, so I'm going to put one more half double in there. And then I'm not even going to slip stitch to join. Double check your pumpkin again. Make sure it looks the way you want it to. Did you see the way my pumpkin like stem was trying to lay down? Like, see, it's moldable. <laughs> Make sure everything is where you want it to be. Now we're going to just do a quick... A quick decrease all the way around so we are going to single crochet two stitches together and just keep going in a spiral so pull up a loop pull up a loop in the next stitch pull off two make sure everything's nice and tight go in the next stitch pull up a loop next stitch pull up a loop pull off two next stitch pull up a loop next stitch pull up a loop Pull off two, next stitch, pull up a loop, next stitch, pull up a loop, pull off two. And if you feel like this is just too tight and it's pulling too much, you can remove some more of your stuffing if you need to. I kind of like the way it's working up, so I'm going to leave mine. Just keep doing two single crochets together and if your hook is getting too squeaky you can change to a metal hook and it will be just fine <laughs> provided you're not working with a metal hook to begin with I don't think I have a four millimeter metal hook anywhere on my desk Actually, I don't think I have one so just keep doing this just keep doing it and it's going to keep closing up your hole Massage it. Make sure everything's where it needs to be. I have a little bit of a dimple right there, so I may need to fill that. I don't want a dimple on the bottom of my pumpkin. Yeah, I think that's going to fix it. Single crochets together. she goes where she stops no one knows see I'm pulling back on the yarn here to keep everything tight Just adjusting as we go. Make sure the stuffing is down and you pull the fabric towards the hole so it's not as stretched out right there. can sometimes be hard on your hands. Now when you get down to about this point when you have one, two, three, four, five, six, about six stitches left over, we're just going to put a single crochet in each one of those stitches, no more together, just about six, six, seven, eight, it doesn't matter. Just put a single crochet in each one of those stitches when you get down so far. We're going to use those and we're going to sew the bottom together. Alright, 
Then we're going to slip stitch that first single crochet to join. I'm going to cut a longish tail, like two feet. Close it off. Alright, this is where we need our darning needle. Yarn needle. And put the yarn in your yarn needle. Push that fluff down a little bit. Pull your your fabric up a little bit. Make sure everything's where you want it to be. All right, now I am going to go into this double cro or single crochet, and then I'm going to go to the one directly across. Pull it closed. Go into the next stitch, and then go on the stitch across from that one. Go into the next stitch. Go into the stitch across from that. Now you see how we have all of that, the white showing? Don't worry, we can fix that. Now we're going to go in and out and in and out around those bars right there. Pull. In and out, in and out, in and out. In and out, in and out. Keep going in and out in the spiral. All right now. I'm just doing that to close some of these up. If you don't want to do this step, you don't really have to. I just like the way it looks. I actually find this part kind of like calming. Now, of course, if you don't have gaps down here, you don't have to do this, but... I also think it looks kind of cool.
right now. I'm going to come up here and fix this part because this part is a little gappy and I don't know why those stitches are gappy, but that's an easy fix. You just go through, grab some stitches. Hang on. Gotta re... Go to the next set of stitches. Pull them closed. Problem solved. There you have it. It's not perfect, but like nothing is. I'm just gonna weave this in. Random places, just weave it in. So it doesn't come undone. And then when you're done, tuck it into the body. Problem solved. Pumpkin done. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you had fun. I hope you make this pumpkin. I hope you enjoy it and I really hope you show me when your pumpkin is done. Like I said, you can make this this as long or as tall as you want, but I like the short squatty pumpkins and I like the way this looks. So if you make this tutorial, if you make this pumpkin, I would really love to see it. I would love for you to show it to me on your social medias. I am on Instagram at Cinnamon Stitches. I am on YouTube at Cinnamon Stitches. I am on Facebook in the Facebook group if you want to post it in there. And uh you can also email it to me. Thank you for watching and I will see you tomorrow for another tutorial. Bye guys.